are back again for another exciting episode of Frightfully Brilliant. <laughs> and we have back again Ophelia. Yes. Yes. Hello. Oh, boy, I tell you, she sent chills down my spine in the last episode <laughs> describing with Mordisha when the bear belly burglar <laughs> broke, broke into broke my blind into girl's the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, <boy> girl's <laughs> bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what a, listen, if you didn't see that, you gotta you know, watch it. You gotta watch it. You, it 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 was a great bit. It was real. And it was true. Yeah, yeah. it's no, not just a bit. It was real. Unfortunately, so, this is a, a feel. The only way I know what we're gonna do. I'm gonna shake your hands. So I can repeat my joke. <laughs> Avilia, I feel ya. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and now we have Gomez. The guest. <laughs> yeah. Always. <laughs> Gomez, you realize this is the tenth time you have been in the hot seat there. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Well, the best thing about where you are right now is you're surrounded by two beautiful women, man. And a slappy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't but, forget slappy. Oh, okay. That so might the be next dangerous. one, slappy. Aha. Hi, slappy. <laughs> and of course, the great, the one, the only, Morticia. I think there's a ghost in the air conditioner. It's even colder than usual. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're going to be back, and we've got some great stuff coming up. And we're back on Frightfully Brilliant, and we have this. So, Tish. What movie are you in the mood to watch? I'm open to whatever you'd like, darling, as long as it's filled with horror, of course. Well, obviously. If it wasn't full of horror, what would be the point? True. Well, in that case, what about the Smurfs? La, 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 la. Well, they're rather cutely horrifying, but I'm saving them up for Halloween. <sighs> All right. But what about a Nightmare on Elm Street marathon? Well, Freddy is my favorite, but we did that last Monday, remember? Indeed, I do. What a delightful nightmare it was. What about Hellraiser? Pinhead always makes us so happy. Well, he really does. A pity I let Aunt Tabitha borrow him. <sighs> the Exorcist? I always laugh so hard at that movie. Like, like, you know, sorry, Slappy. Like, whenever, like... <laughs> She wheezes on the stairs in front of everyone, or when she throws up, it's so hilarious. Ah, that is a great scene. But, you see, I'm reading the book right now, so I would rather wait. I know, but let me think. Maybe we just don't need to watch a movie. No, no, I have an idea. Uh, I got it. The best horror movie ever. Oh, that one. Yes, the one that gave us such delightful nightmares that we had to be committed. Almost. Almost. That was really fun. <coughs> I remember Uncle Infested had to chain us up in the basement for our own protection and for the protection of others. Well, good then. Dumb and dumber it is. <laughs> <laughs> and that was frightfully brilliant. We are back. We are talking fashion, objects, and things. Things. And what things do we have this time? Well, it's about the harvest. Right now, it's oh. harvest time. So, Gomez? Well, yes. We wanted to discuss uh, the meaning of harvest itself, first of all. Uh, even the word is kind of interesting. In Old English, harvest is hair fest, and it means autumn harvest time, or even August, so it has clear seasonal associations. Physically, of course, harvest is defined as the act of reaping, gathering, or storing grain. And of course, since uh, grain is stored at a certain location and a certain time, 
Harvest can also be associated with a boundary and its protectors. From fairies who live between different boundaries and places, to the Grim Reaper who is metaphorically said to harvest souls. But possibly the most striking example of the harvester in modern folklore and horror movies is the Scarecrow. Mm. And like many other harvesting figures, the Scarecrow sits at the boundary and protects it without being part of the system it guides. And here, as you can see, we have brought a few of our favorite representatives <coughs> of the Scarecrow that we would like to share with you. This one, they're both from a few years back, but they're just so good we haven't been able to find better. And this is like a heavy ceramic <coughs> one by Jim Shaw. He does a lot of really nice statues, especially for nice. Halloween. That the bottom nice. broke. It was like a fancier pedestal, but Uncle Infested fixed it. He made it a pretty wood one that I like a lot better. Yeah. So the wooden thing is not natural, but it's even better. And then he's so beautiful. He's got this cool key on his belt. Speaking of guard and, and gateways, they call him the gatekeeper scarecrow. He's got these beautiful ravens on his shoulders. That could be Gomez and I. <coughs> and our friend, because it's the third one. And then he's got like this cool hat with a little flower thing. And his head is like a turnip maybe or something. Like, What do you think? Yes, it does look seemingly... And then he's got like a cool like cloak on his back, sort of like. He's yeah. just beautiful. I mean, I love those scalp points on any kind of Halloween. I like how clothes. it's painted. It's painted so well. Yeah, and so Very realistically, nice. it's a good solid weight. He's got the little scarecrow things down here at his feet that are uh, like the straw. And he's just so pretty. Now, where did you get that again? That is from um, Jim mm -hmm. Shaw. So if you look Jim up, Shaw, yeah, right. he does a is lot of stuff. Is that a website, Jim Shaw? It's, it's a company, like a manufacturer. Oh, he see. makes it, whatever. So if you put in Jim Shaw, um, Scarecrow, Gatekeeper, it's an older one, but you can still buy it. Uh -huh. And this is at least a foot tall. Yeah. So yeah. he's just like, these are the Scarecrows that we've gotten that when we, you know, saw them, it's like, we can't top this. This is beautiful. So any new Scarecrow I see come out just isn't as good. No, and now I'm going to move, I'm going to move him over to show the next one. Oops. All right. Now, this is Isaac, and you think Isaac. children of the corn, right, you know, Isaac. like scarecrows and, and corn. So this is Isaac, and he is from Living Dead Dolls. And I uh, heard about Living Dead Dolls for a while before I actually got one a few years ago, because I thought it was all zombie living stuff. Living Dead Dolls. Yeah, That's and I thought thing. it was all like zombie-ish and stuff, but it's not all. Uh, so this is not a zombie, he's a scarecrow. He is the only soft-bodied Living Dead Doll that I've seen. And I want to say he's from Series 5 or 6. Six, maybe? Well, soft body, that makes it so you can sit it down or stand it up, right. or whatever you want. Right, and scarecrows are stuffed with straw, so they're making it more realistic. Yeah, but yeah. his shoes are a harder plastic, as are his hands. Uh, Let's talk about his hands for a second. They're yeah, these beautiful that. claws, which yeah, he's like that. mixed with a crow. I love it. Wow. And then his mouth looks stitched shut, and his hat has real straw, as do the edges of his sleeves. So that's real straw. Yeah. That's not phony baloney plastic. Or I don't think like so. That. No. I mean, and and he's, he's online for now. I think I paid $20 for him, and he comes with a pet oh, nice. called Old Crow. I have such a soft spot for uh, ravens. So he can give his crow friend a hug. But uh, it's a cute little crow figure. And he's just neat. That's him from all sides. He's got yeah. his wings folded. And it's just neat. So you get two in one. You get a little crow figure, and you get the coolest scarecrow ever that you can pose and sit. And his head is hard plastic, too, if I didn't say. He doesn't have hair, which, again, makes more sense. He's not like yeah. a typical doll. No. But, I mean, these are just some of the best scarecrows. And when you see other ones, they just don't touch it. Like, they don't. His they clothes don't are cloth, and his body is cloth. So, like you said, he can pose and sit and cross his arms and do all kinds of fun stuff. And he's just very cool. And Living Dead dolls come in coffins most of the time, um, like the bat that oh, we showed yeah, in the yeah. last episode. Baldwin, the taxidermy bat, he's a real dead bat, died of natural causes, all that good stuff. And he was our housewarming gift in our last episode. So this would be a, a Living Dead doll box Yes. that the bat is now in. Yes, I did that. I spoofed him <laughs> up. And, yes. Isn't that great? Yeah, very cool. So it's like a coffin. When you think about harvest time, you always think about good decor to bring that feeling and that spirit of harvest time to you. So these are our particular favorites that we recommend. I'm sure you guys all have others that you like, but keep these in mind. They're old and you can still get them online. So it's wow. just cool classic yeah. stuff. I think he came out in the early 2000s and the Scarecrow by Jim Shaw may have come out around six years ago, I'm guessing, give or take. I'm probably a little bit wrong, but 
Just such well-made, beautiful things for the fall and Living for the scarecrows. LivingDeadDolls.com. There's a website I was noticing on the back and of the on, box. Yeah, but Isaac probably isn't on there anymore because he's old. Oh, yeah. So you'll have to put Isaac um, Living Dead Doll Scarecrow on eBay or on something. On eBay and find him, yeah. Yeah, if you want him. That's just a great, great doll. Yeah. It's very cool. I'm not really a doll person, so it has to be a really special kind of thing. Isn't that right, Slappy? He doesn't like dolls in the house. He doesn't. Com no. Competition. He doesn't mind Isaac. <laughs> nah, he, he gets creeped out. Get, he Ooh. gets creeped out? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. With dolls? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, what about the doll he's with? Is that me? Yeah, that's you. He loves me. <laughs> I don't scare him. He's, he calls the shots in our relationship. <laughs> Isn't that right, Gomez? He, says, yes, he tells do. us all what to do. We're, he's our roommate, but he's kind of in charge. And he told Gomez no more dolls in the house. I think that was after him and Chucky got into it. Yeah. Like, Ooh. That was our first. Was that our first show or second show when we did the Chucky and Slappy with yeah. dolls scarier? Yeah, 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 yeah. But we've gotten off harvest topic. But you guys, yeah, you have to go back and watch that if you're. We <laughs> hope you're having a wonderful harvest. Think about reaping all the bounty, and the scarecrows are guarding the boundaries for you, keeping things safe. Yeah. Oh, I see. And that's what. Frightfully brilliant. And we'll be back. <laughs> and what are we going to review? Well, you guys remember the cult classic Hocus Pocus about the yeah, wonderful yeah. three witches and the evil kids that were trying to make them be vanquished. You know, because we're on the evil side here. <laughs> um, it came out in the early 90s and everybody loves it, even though it wasn't really well received in theaters. It, like many movies, became hugely popular later. So Hocus Pocus, everybody has been wanting a Hocus Pocus 2. And Disney oh. has not done that, but they did hire a really dreadful writer because it was bad to write a sequel. Oh. <laughs> and this is not my opinion only. I hated the book really hard, and then I looked on Amazon to see how other people were feeling, and 95% uh -huh. of other Ooh. people echoed my thoughts beautifully. Oh. So I'm not just like sharing. A lot of times I'll have a unique opinion, but this is... A lot of people hated right. this. But as this like should first. be done. And, but the, the author's name seems to be false because we can't really find it anywhere. So whoever this is is wise oh. enough to hide their dreadful writing under a pen name. Oh. I will be cutting, yeah. but I'm honest. I can be cutting, but I'm a very honest person. I don't just cut to be mean. I, no. you know. Well, and when you this say you like, like something, that's genuine. Yeah, You're not and when I don't like it, it's genuine. I'll that's give good right. reviews on good products. And, yeah. you know, like, yeah, this was bad. It was like bad fan fiction. Like, if I was on a fan fiction mm. site reading this, yeah. I would say that was bad writing. So how Disney published this just hurts me. Oh. I don't understand how they read this and thought, this is good. This is publishable. So I've, I've criticized it. Now I'll explain why. They have two books. If you want to buy this and you want to read it, Hocus Pocus and Hocus Pocus 2, the sequel, are written together in one volume. Oh. Hocus Pocus 1 is pretty much just a novelization of the movie. That's been done with a lot of movies from right. Star Wars to Halloween, really. Mm, okay. That's right. So that's okay. That's kind of fun to read. Um, and you get a little bit more insight into the characters, and it's just fun. And that's fine. And then you might want to just stop there. Because two will ruin it for you. I thought the same thing. I thought, I hope I forget this by Halloween so it doesn't ruin it for me. And then someone uh, else said that in an Amazon review, and I just laughed my head off. I was like, God, oh, yeah. yes. That was your thought. Oh, because it was so bad. They added new characters that didn't make sense. They tried to make it all so PC, like they were trying to please every minority in the world. Uh, and, I mean, I'm not in, insulting. I mean, we can be blind so we can decide we're minorities because we can't see or something. I don't know. But I'm not trying to insult minorities. I'm just saying when you try to make a book that's just, like, covering every single one, it's just... Covering all the bases. Yeah, it looks bad. It mm -hmm. looks poorly done. It looks just not good. And it didn't really make sense. And one of the reviewers, again, on Amazon said this had no place in Hocus Pocus. Like, it's just, it's taking the focus away from the witches. Yeah. Focus away from the Hocus. And it's trying to just talk about all kinds of stuff that, like, they had a lesbian couple in there. And, like, it's Disney and stuff. And I just didn't understand. Like, I have lesbian friends, and, like, I'm good with that. But, again, we're talking about Hocus Pocus and a Halloween movie. What are you doing? Like, it's like they're trying to use it to drive different points home. And about different stuff, and it, I'm just that was just one example. There was like ten different minorities they were trying to cover, but now I had to explain to my nephew what that means. <laughs> and I think he wants two lesbian girlfriends because he thinks it's hot. I don't think she likes this book. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, no, I'm, I'm good with that. I just didn't, didn't have a point with the witches. Right. And then they added this character that made no sense because in the beginning, when the witches take children's souls to get young again, that's the movie that we all know and right. love, they're old, and then they have to get young. So let's say it starts when these witches are in their, like, 90s or something. Well, in the second book, they suddenly have a 24-year-old sister. Suddenly. Now, uh -huh. Mom is dead, so I don't know how Mom, if she's older than these 90-some-year-old witches, had a young sister. I mean, that was just like, Mom must be some powerful ovaries having Mom. <laughs> just the whole thing it was like that. It made no sense. It was all over the place. The characters were very flat, very lackluster. It was badly done. And the fourth sister was a good witch who was against the other ones. And she was apparently always around, and she was in the history books, and this was stated in the second book. But in the first book, she was not there. Uh. It's like, you know, if we were trying to say Ophelia was on every show before now. And it's like, no, she wasn't. So it was just poor writing. I'm telling you guys, don't read it. Don't do it. But it exists if you wish to traumatize yourself for Halloween in not a good way. It is very poor writing, and it is out there for you. And if you want to read the first book, it's okay. <laughs> Gomez, did you have any thoughts that I didn't cover in my hate rant? <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're uh -oh. in the mood for another Twilight with uh, the uh, polarity of the couple reversed, with two girls playing the role of the male and the female characters. There was a Bella. Yeah, there was a Bella. Uh, <laughs> she but had a girlfriend. Isabella was basically like Edward. She was very accomplished. She, she had it all going. I there like was the characters if they had been in a different story, like somebody else said on Amazon. Yeah. yeah. It just didn't belong there. Right. So right. That's what I was reminded of. If it had been put in no, a No, it wasn't context. really a good book, but I didn't mind the yeah. things I was complaining about if it had been a different book. Got it. Like the, the PC I stuff, I mean, you know. Yeah. But the characters were kind of flat and they weren't really well defined. No. And we wanted to revisit our, our characters that we liked and you barely mm -hmm. get to see them from the first movie. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that was a good point about Isabella being a lot like Edward. That was really smart, Gomez. Oh, thank you, dear. Yes, what else? Well, I'm reminded of that quote that is widely ascribed to Stephen King. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but that's what the internet says. Uh, the internet says that it's got to be true, Gomez. You know this. <laughs> so the quote goes like that, that uh, he compares the two novels, Harry Potter, the first book, and Twilight. And he's saying that Harry Potter is a book about overcoming difficult odds, complex challenges, growing up, getting stronger. Twilight is about finding the right kind of a boyfriend. <laughs> so that is something that I could maybe say about this Basically, movie. Harry Potter good, Twilight bad. <laughs> <laughs> and so Hocus Pocus 1 good, Hocus Pocus the book 2 bad, and we really hope they do not make it into a movie. And I doubt anyone from Disney is watching, but if you are, please don't make that into a movie. Like, try to get someone who can actually write, and then <laughs> test it out with a panel, and then make another movie if you must. I used to want a second movie like everyone else, but now I'm like, if you would ruin it, just don't do it. Don't do it. Leave it alone. Sometimes people, the moral of the story is don't ask for a sequel, because you might get this. And that... Was frightfully brilliant. <laughs> we will be back. That wonderful segment called <clears throat> Creepy News. Yes. <laughs> that means it's true since it's news. It, yeah, that's yes, right. Everything yeah. in the fourth segment. Well, everything else is true too, but well, like. Right, yeah. right. But like reviews and things yeah, like that. Yeah, this is this true. This is specifically news. a news bulletin near something you. To, something that's true. And this time we're talking about Ouija boards. On one of our earlier episodes, I touched on Ouija boards when I was talking about. Animals and can pets see spirits? Yeah. Or any animals, can they <clears> see spirits? And, and the conclusion was, for those of you who didn't see it, some can and some can't, just like people. But I told a whole story that happened to me that allowed that conclusion. And it had to do with a Ouija board, and I was not using it. Other people in my house were using it, unbeknownst to me. So um, the point is that I said in that episode that they're bad. And here we're here to talk a little bit about why they're bad. Um, because they're sold as games in Toys R Us or what? Toys R Us is gone now, you guys. Yeah, where are they sold now? Uh, online. Walmart. Toys R Us is gone. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, I understand that Took Walmart pause, and Target toys. are ramping up their, their toy department because, because, because of the demise of yeah. Yeah, so Toys R Us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure Amazon has it, but really it's being sold as a toy and it's not, and we're going to mm. explain why. Yes, it is just plastic and, and cardboard, so it itself is not dangerous. It's how it is used because our minds are so powerful, we use 10% of our brains that we're aware of. The rest of it can tap into the spirit realm and it can bring things to you you don't want because your spirit, you're in your body, you're a soul, you're a spirit, you're animating yourself. So what makes you think you can't reach out to other spirits that happen to not be in their body? With the help of this device. And I'm here with, obviously, David, but what you guys didn't know about Gomez and Ophelia is they are two mediums. They both can contact the other side in different kinds of ways. And Gomez didn't even know if he believed in ghosts before he discovered he could see them. So that was kind of interesting. We'll have to tell a story about that someday. But I wanted them here to talk about Ouija boards. This way. Because they are mediums. <laughs> we have ghosts here. <laughs> yes, in we have room. ghosts here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're mediums. And I kind of wanted their thoughts on this whole phenomena. Um, there's a history of the Ouija board. And what's creepy about the Ouija board history, I mean, you can look this up, this is true. We don't even know who really invented it. Like, no one's taking credit for this. And that's kind of scary, like, did some ghost from beyond that wanted to come back and screw with people and cause trouble invent it? Is that why nobody knows who it was? Like, that was my thought, Gomez, when we saw that. What did you feel? Because to me, it's very creepy that no one even knows who invented the Ouija board. I did. Yeah, no. It was around well, the 1800s. Yeah, like <laughs> late 1800s. It's been around for a while. Yeah, it was kind of strange to me that it was invented roughly at the same period that the whole system of magic was deeply explored by the Order of the Golden Dawn, where all the tarot decks became popular and all the spiritual sciences came out and all that. Some, some dark, some normal magic started coming out. It's kind of strange that it coincided in time with that. So it seems a little bit more than... When was this? What time era? Uh, we're talking Late about... 1800s. Yeah. Late 1800s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And the Aleister Crowley and all that, that's, that was yeah. his heyday in the beginning. Really? Yeah. yeah. But nobody knows who invented the Ouija board. The, the beginning of the Ouija board... The pre-Ouija board was the triangular thing that you see sitting on the Ouija board now that you touch your fingers and it moves, called the planchette. Yeah. That was started, that, that <clears throat> was being used before the whole board was invented. Ah. And the board came to be, and nobody takes credit for it, but this is interesting, the patent, when these people decided to go ahead and use it and took it to get a patent on it, the patent person said that he would not grant a patent unless the spirit could tell them, like, was it his name or something? Yeah. Something none of the people there knew. name it. They wanted the spirit to name it. Though. Yeah, but they wanted him to name himself because none of the people going to him knew his name. Yeah. So he got it. Wow. Something was talking through that board that was not those people, and he got his patent because they, they were able to tell with the board and the planchette and the letters on the board his name. And yeah. so, you know, how would that happen if this board was not able to help people to tap into things? So, no, I don't think this is anything but plastic and cardboard, and that's what a lot of people say that want to poo-poo a Ouija board being real. You're right, it's just plastic and cardboard, but it's like a phone cord. It's just plastic, too, and it's connecting you to whoever you're calling. Well, okay, when it's not a cordless or a cell phone okay <laughs> we're talking old school phone but you know it's it's a connection that people can focus on and use and maybe if you guys could explain what you feel about how that works for people so that they can understand why this is a dangerous thing i've had experiences that tell me it was a dangerous thing but you know um oh i want to toss out there it's also interesting gomez and ophelia have never even been near a ouija board and they're mediums so okay. they know let's hear it yeah. i want nothing to do we with got them. three minutes to wrap it up I think they're dangerous. I think certain people probably could use them and get away with it, but they probably have no magic or aren't very evolved. But a lot of people I still are and it. don't know it, and so I think it's safe just not to use it. You can bring things that you're not trying to bring and that you can't get rid of. The Exorcist was written, that's when Ouija boards started getting scary, about a girl and she starts playing with a Ouija board and then she's possessed, so it's bad. Gomez, any quick thoughts? 
Well, I'm thinking that the mind is sort of like a device that could send and receive signals. It's well documented that it operates on different frequencies like sound waves. So I don't see any reason why it cannot connect to the world beyond sending a signal out and receiving signals, including from spirits who would be operating on a similar kind of energy. And also, as common sense perspective to me, it's like, if you know, for example, that you are meeting somebody like Ted Bundy today, and you have a chance to survive, maybe he won't kill you, maybe it's safe, there is a chance that he would leave you alone and won't have the time to kill you, but why would you want to take the risk of opening the door and meeting and talking to him, what would be the point of that? So I never understood people who don't believe halfway through it and still try it out, considering the danger. Thrill seekers, but they don't realize they might not be able to get rid of it so easily. Yeah, you don't really know what you're signing up for. You, you don't. don't. Know, you don't know what you would be controlling or not being able to control. And probably the latter. Yeah. So without training, I would say don't try it at and home. And with training, don't try it at home. <laughs> like really, because you don't know. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. No. Just say no to Ouija boards. No. Like, just say no to drugs. <laughs> <laughs> just say no. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> this has been a really good session. Very thoughtful this time. All kinds of things. Morticia, have you ever thought about writing a book? Well, we are authors. Gomez and I have been published in anthologies, and we're looking for agents for our regular books. Our, our oh. whole entire novel books. I would say regular, but... So we do write. Yeah. Not not nonfiction, but we write. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that would be good. Well, I got to tell you, it's been a good time, and I'm looking forward to next time <laughs> when we will be back. Because it's rightfully brilliant. brilliant.